Woohoo! We're up here, lofty heights, lofty heights. And uh, normally if you're going hunting or something, you're up in some kind of a little house or a pedestal looking around. Not that I'm an avid hunter, but you know, back in Africa, there were certain little hideouts and things to perch on because some of the things could be easier seen from lofty heights. So thank you for joining me. I have a few things I wanted to share, things to come, and they just so happen to be at this point in some areas that are a little bit elusive to the normal eye from down there on the floor. But this is just my Vanda Cristata crossed with Vanda Tricolor that I call Leopard Yawn. However, next to it, surprise, surprise, is my Neo Stylus Lou Sneery. And what do you know? Look at what it's doing. I think you, I hope you can see that as a motorcycle passes. I'm getting another spike and I'm thinking to try and get it in focus. But isn't that amazing? Yeah, we've got more Vandalu Sneery coming. I'm going to be very interested to see how well that is going to develop second time around. We have some Tolumnia blooms there, which we will feature in Blooms For You video. And Fortile is doing quite well. Zydenfadenia mitrata is ticking over, hanging in there. The new growth that I have, the one to speak of, is developing okay. You know, it's not very fast, so I can't see if there's any decline at the moment. But other than that, it is completely bug-free and nothing is buzzing around on the surface. And that is a good sign. I don't need things buzzing around on the surface. So I'm just going to slowly hand you over to my top shelf. We are in the Blooming Alley prime location, but on the top shelf here. And I wanted to show you my Parkinsonianum, Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. One new growth where I would like it to be, because that means there will be roots going in the pot. That is awesome, that's good to know. This little growth that was actually stopped and stunted, it seemed like a seedling growth, has decided to extend a little bit, which is very interesting. I was not expecting that. And then here, it is starting another new growth, which is also fantastic. And this is where the ninja mounts will come very, very handy, because if there are any roots developing here, then I already have a plan, like a secondary structure in place that I'm going to put there so the roots don't dehydrate and stop growing. Just to make sure that the Epidendrum Parkinsonianum will have continued growing success. This was the growth that didn't bloom and I don't know if it's going to give me a new growth, but look at here on the hunt together and we find another new growth. So that's great, very nice to see. And I am quite impressed how this is working out. And I have just spied something else out of the corner of my eye that I don't like one bit, one bit. This is a scale right at the bottom of my struggling little stars, right there. It's alive, I'll be back, just one moment. There is that offensive, offensive creature. I only saw one, but one is all it takes. So it's not there anymore and I don't see any others. Really, really trying to get this little Brassavola, little stars to some form of health again. A Schwerter orchid, it's been like this for two years. Pathetic, honestly, very upset. So my Dendrobium burana twist is growing roots. I love that. And there is my Yokosuka story. And here is my Cattleya Maxima. And I am waiting, I'm waiting for those two new growths down there to grow roots. I need to address this orchid, even though it has now got 
three sheaths on the go. And I don't want to lose this year's blooming. There's the other growth, but it has a sheath there. I don't want to lose this year's blooming, but if I have to, I have to repot this one. It needs a cleanup and it will get a video all of its own. Now the sheaths might look dry, but that's normal for my maximum. That one already matured early in the season goes dry. And if it does de develop any buds, they will be in that dry sheath eventually. So I'm not concerned at all about it. We've got the falcata doing well. There's a new root right there. Today it's been 30 degrees. Yep, and very windy, so I've been spraying a lot. Here's my Chrysnetia vietnamica. I also keep that up here now because it was starting to curl funny on the top, reaching for the light on the shelf where it was, and that doesn't need to happen, so I've put it up on the top shelf so that the apex does straighten out and doesn't have to reach for light. But other than that, up here, there's not much else going on. In there, hang on a second, I have two Brassavola digbiana growths coming, one there. And let me get rid of one pot. I really need to be careful of those blooms. They belong to somebody else. So there's my Brassavola digbiana finally, finally on the move. And of course, facing the opposite direction to the light because I'd like them to go nice and upright. So I hope the light is okay that you can see them. And then I've got the uh, golden nuggets in the back and they are forming buds. It's a tight squeeze up here. You can see there's a dark shadow in there. That's one and there's another sheath up here and it has no dark shadows to speak of. So we'll see if we get one blooming out of that. And its partner over here also has a sheath, but no buds in there just yet. These bloom like early spring, so I'm not in particular hurry or worried. And I'm just now going to disinfect my hands because I touched them because they're dodgy ones. And I don't want to spread, if they have something, I don't want that to spread onto anything else I touch. I'll be right back. And before we go anywhere else, look at how pretty Gyrac horn is still. I've lost a couple of blooms now, but how oh, this one is so long lasting. It's absolutely remarkable. I thoroughly enjoy that. Beautiful shape, very exotic, gorgeous colors, no fragrance but long-lasting, what's not to like. I love it, and I'm glad that we can see it in this light with the sun shining on it. I normally have difficulty filming in this space because of all the shadows. So that worked out well, that was pretty. Good timing, yay, got something right. So I'm here on my little wrought iron shelf, and I just wanted to show I've got a new growth coming on one of the seedlings. It's the Cattleya melina or moonbells. I can't see the tag, but uh, we repotted these recently and potted them up from their seedling setup. It's the melina and another new growth already. That is so cool. They're doing really well. I have to water quite frequently. Let's check the reservoir. Look at that little thing. It's empty again. I watered yesterday. So yeah, that it has to be constantly monitored. They are very thirsty now that they're in active growth. All those roots. And here's the other one that we transplanted together. It's fine. I do have all the roots still actively growing. I can see how they're now taking up the nutrients, which is awesome. And back there, you can see, there we go. This is Lobata cerula. And it's doing really well as well. New growth, the second one of the season, and now new roots as well. So this one, no, that's fine. But I'm enjoying seeing that this Lobata is coming onto its own, and that's quite a big growth coming here, respective of what was before. 
I can already tell that's that's great nice to see so I'm gonna slowly pan you over to my Peggy Ruth Carpenter I lost a spike and I'm thinking that has to do with where it lives when it is hot wind it comes through here I have two more on the go so I'm hoping that these will make it that would be nice they've been allocated this spike was allocated which is a bummer because then I couldn't film it for the lady so these two have been given to her to see I hope that they come through and then um, very slowly you get you past the dangly bits from Parkinsonianum here's my Cattleya Clandiae and look let's see look at this right there that is another new growth it is trying well let's say the two of us are fighting to get it acclimatized into a semi-hydro self-watering setup so it's been a long road we've struggled together i have this tiny tiny new growth this year in the back another tiny tiny new growth but these growths have produced new roots so you can see that this root is going down this one is an old root that never made it anything of itself and behind there there is another small root going down so i've left moss where it's grown to help me with the dry top layer and now it's bringing out another one and i think we've got it established with those roots going down in there we've done it i think we've managed it and then look at gold coast in sing you let me correct that Xiang, not Hinsing, Xiang Yu Gold Coast. Woo! That is gonna be fire. That's gonna be great. Lots and lots of buds there. Very excited. Kyoguchi Happy Field back there. Let me see if I can sneak my hand through there. New roots. That's great. Right there, you can see the new roots, which is very, very good to see. It's losing one of the leaves of the oldest bulbs in the back that's all right that's normal here are the two dendrobiums we repotted that we went to town on radically they're doing fine i miss the surface every morning with uh, our o water and seaweed just to give them that hormonal bump and boost to uh, create new roots and they're absolutely fine but i wanted to show you and if i can sneak down in there let's go down very slowly whoop I'm getting caught up here with my rink of Stylus Gigantea across the ruler. You can see there my magic wand. That new growth is coming on really nicely and it's getting new roots. So I am going to reposition that one in the pot and turn it around so it grows into the pot as opposed to what it's doing now. Now that we've got roots the perfect time and I want it to go to the right down here let's have a look here we are my Harpophila we repotted her together and look at this a root finding its way and pushing a lava rock out of the way <laughs> it's forgiven it is now pot bound I don't mind if a root behaving renegade like but my Harpophila has a sheath. I don't know if it's going to bloom. It is a wonderful sign to see though that I have a sheath. If it blooms, I'm going to let it because the orchid now has so many roots, she can take it, she can sustain herself. And that is all that it is about. Before she was extremely weak, but her progress has been impressive. So yeah, if she decides to bloom, great she can enough roots in the pot and i'm going to try and get up without sounding like a stranded mammoth here remember zobenikofia we've been through trials and tribulations and trying to get it right that is root number three isn't that amazing that was not there when we potted it up we had a root that i was trying to guide and keep an eye on here going towards the tag 
Now, I haven't seen that root in a long, long time. And I'm wondering if it didn't make it from all the fussing and all the manipulation that it had this summer. But I can see two roots that are doing well and are still green. And one is right in there. I'm not going to fiddle too much. Hang on. And it's green. That is great to see. Ceramus goes back. And then this is the newest and fantastic visual that I get when I spray this one down just on the surface in the morning. So Zobenicofia Humbertiana has, I think, found its forever home in an orchid top. Very, very pleased about that. All right, let's go a little bit to the right. All right, here is... Um, Ascocentrum Ampuyacella Pink Dreamer. And I'm just giving a quick update because I've got another root here. I'm going to start to train going down. And the root we put in the pot is still green, still doing well. The other one didn't make it, but it has developed a lot of new roots. They can stay aerial. I'm going to be working with this one to get it into the pot. No blooms this year but we're going to change that culture next year because this year you can see how much shade is in this little shelf it has had full shade all summer it was super dark red from the anthocyanin and then that caused some concern so it got moved into a shadier spot we've got the color back but we don't have any blooms this season at all however we have a very very healthy orchid that is something else that is absolutely fine with me. It doesn't always have to be about the blooms. If I can get an orchid to looking healthy and getting established, everything else will take care of itself eventually. But here, Lelia perinii. Woohoo! We've got a beautiful sheath. And this growth is much bigger than my last year's growth when it was trying to acclimatize. Now, this growth has achieved former height of how it should be. I still don't have the same length and leave, but I do have a sheath and it is bumpy down there. Lelia perinii is on the move. There's bumps in that sheath. That's awesome. And then here's another Asconcentrum Christensonianum that I really want to establish in the Lekka system. And it has been a beast of a stubborn orchid. So deep shade all summer long, but I can see that one root, and that's all I need to start finding its way down into the Lekka. And you can see the previous root, that's only a stump. That's nothing of substance in the Lekka. But if these two can help each other and in tandem, the one grows down the other because it's always wet, that'll work. It has a much nicer color as well now. It doesn't look so stressed and brow beaten. So there's hope. I'm looking forward to seeing this one improve with another in another 12 months or so. Yeah, really happy to see this one root coming out. Okay, let me now see where we're going and pan you over there. The beauty of Nanipuake Dogashima has left the blooming alley. So that's it. Gorgeous, gorgeous orchid. Very happy to have seen her blooms this year. My Vanda Darvinara Blue is still going, starting to fade a little bit, but so cute because it's now going light lavender and the lip and everything stays really dark. So cute. Dendrobium Hibiki. Yeah. Yeah, Old Faithful. Awesome. But uh, they're a distraction because the matter of interest is back here. This is my Cattleya Intermedia. Variety Aquini. And there is a sheath. First ever. Uh, let's see. Will it amount to anything? I don't know. I don't know. We will find out together. But this would be the first ever sheath on this orchid right here, which is great. That's the third new growth of the season. The first two having matured much earlier. So that's great to see. 
And back there is a Shilleriana, but I'm going to take her out another day. She has her second new growth of the season coming. But we'll do a little spotlight on certain orchids. I just wanted to go on a hunt with you together. I've seen some things and I thought, okay, grab the camera. Let's just go bit by bit. But yeah, the Shilleriana back here, the Catlia Shilleriana, she has a second new growth of the season coming. So let's go to the Top Guns because um, let's have a look what they've got in store for us. Here's my bushels of catacetums. I only have three, but judging by their size, I wonder if I'm overstepping my space considerations in to get more, because I do want uh, more of these, but look at the size of them. Oh my gosh, my goodness. I mean, I know they go dormant in the winter, but still, they still need to be accommodated correctly in the summer. But uh, the, the thing that I've, noticed and I'm really thrilled about I don't know either way what it is but it's something it jack of diamonds oh you're still so sticky jumbo mickey here on my right is still sticky jack of diamonds has got something going on do you mind excuse you right there so I wonder if that's a spike it's big it's chubby it would be a stonker of a spike if that is one but yeah, I just wanted to show you, this would be the first time that I'm seeing something like this on my catacetums. So if you're going to spike first Jack of Diamonds, you'll be my all-time favorite. But here's um, this monstrosity this is the Fred Clarkara Black Pearl. That's just a ridiculous, ridiculous bulb. Look at this thing. It's the size of an oversized cucumber. Yeah, and I, but I want more. I do want more of these. I love how they grow. But let's see. Let's see if I can... Uh, let's see when they go dormant. What is their space? Because, I mean, you want to have more. And they say, yeah, they go dormant. Don't worry about it. But look at the size of this thing. <laughs> you still need to put it somewhere. Oh, well, it can go on a shelf without light, I guess. Or in a cupboard. All right, let's go down slowly without falling and doing some serious damage. Okay, so um, coming up, just coming up, future repots that I have to do because now's the time, my Zagarik wax bifoliate. And I will film everything I consider a prima donna. It's growing new roots. I can see them through here, back there. There is just a stub of new roots coming. And yeah. I'm going to do this as quickly as possible, get rid of that brown old back pseudobulb there. Zagarik wax will be filmed, tis a diva, and we're going to take care of it. Here I have a Rinko Lelio Catlea, Sunya green, that we cut the rhizome on. And now it's growing new roots as well. It's uh, not a bifoliate, but I'm going to take care of that because if there is a cut rhizome, I want to see if an eye has swollen. We'll look at that. So that will be a video of its own as a follow-up to our rhizome cut in spring. And then I have here the Binosa Wabash Valley. This one has grown superbly. It's not going to fit on the shelf that it was last winter because of this growth right here. It's just gone bonkers. It needs a repot and I will take care of that. I have not addressed um, Brassavola crosses as a repot. Um, I have another eye swelling. I have another new growth already starting in the back and it hasn't even bloomed yet, but there's a new growth right there. Eee, through the sticks, you can see it, that, that thing peeking up there. And it has sheaths as well. So that'll be a video all of its own because it does have sheaths in there. Okay, hunter gatherer, come on. Um, and this big growth has a sheath as well. And I love this one, it's got a speckled lip, it's gorgeous. But um, yeah, we're gonna do a video about that. That needs to be addressed, it is high noon. Another thing I wanted to show was Look at how my Ancelia Africana is doing. I haven't seen this one in a while, but we do know now that roots are in the pot from a previous quick update. But look, I'm getting another new growth. Woohoo! And it's starting its basket root thing. 
which I find super, super interesting. So the two growths of this year have been uh, not quite mature yet, but they're doing well. I mean, this time, this, this Ancelia is tiny. We've got a long way to go, but I'm loving its progress. So now it's moved over to a little bit more of a sunnier corner longer in the day because of the way the angle of the sun changes. And I'm trying to train this growth to come up and around. If that doesn't work because of the white wall, I still have time to play with it and move it this way so that the white wall becomes my highest light source. But that is exciting. Looking forward to seeing this one develop and become like a weed. I love these little roots poking up there. Yeah, they're very promising. Now, uh, I'm digressing because I can get carried away. Let me just move Golden Cellar out of the way. And uh, here is the one that um, I did cut the, the sheath. I wanted to show you that. I just nipped off the top there. And uh, I saw something inside, but I'm not going to play with it. I'm a little bit concerned how everything is developing. I want to make sure that this bifoliate is okay and nothing is going to be wrong with it. The new growth is coming along amazing. It's like nothing's ever happened, so I'm pleased about that. This is the Fushu Glory Happy Holiday. I just pulled it instead of just talking about it. This is Happy Holiday. So the sheath has gone and dried up on us and it's super sticky and ick and I'm not going to touch that any further, but um, I don't know what's in here. We're just going to have to wait and see, and I don't want to fiddle too much because if there are some blooms coming, I don't want to bruise them with me messing around on that sheath. You know, I've cut it, and that should be good enough for now. So you go oh, far away from Siliano. That's where you're going. Let's make you position you correctly. Righty ho, kimas, kimas. I wanted to show you something else. Um, oh, down here. Let me get a chair. Down here, I have a Sunya green mailman. And uh, my other plant buds blasted, but, uh, and this is Ciliano. That's why I was cautious with the Ancelia Africana. Ciliano, yeah. Okay, look. I do have something funky going on in here. Is it a sheath? Is it a bud? I think it is something that can't quite make up its mind what it wants to be. And if it's a sheath, it's a conky sheath. <laughs> so I don't know if my mailman is going to bloom at all or what it's trying to do or if this is normal. It is bulgy in there. Maybe that is normal. Maybe that is why on my other Sunya green, the buds blasted because they didn't develop a sheath. And maybe that's the protection they need from the outside elements, but it is bulgy in there. So I'm just gonna check what happens tomorrow, if that's gonna split open of its own accord. Oh no, look what we can do. Let's see if I can get this in focus. You see how I'm squeezing it in its opposite and I've just cracked it there? I hope that was in focus. So yeah. Just opened it up. Just a little bit of a tease with the nail. That's all that's needed. If there's something going to come out, it'll come out there and it might be distorted, but we shall see that. So that's Sunya Green Mailman. And this, we repotted together and it has a sheath. And this is Chunya Good Life number one. And there are buds in here. So the sheath has dried out. And even though we repotted it, but there is a bulge. I'm hoping they're not dried up buds. It was flat when I was doing the repotting with video. There was no substance in there. It was a green sheath. So now we got the bulge, which is awesome. So let's hope that good life number one has something to give us some nice blooms and not something distorted because of our intervention. And uh, every video needs a cliffhanger, no? So I'm wondering, what is my cliffhanger? Let me get up. Let me show you what my cliffhanger is. Ta-da! Cliffhanger. CG Roebling, Blue Heaven. 
they are opening. So on that note, and I would say bombshell, but it's not really on that cliffhanger. Thank you so much for joining me on my little hunt and tour, inspections of new growth roots, spikes, buds, and soon to be blooms. I really appreciate having you here. I hope you enjoyed having a little look around and that things were in focus when they were meant to be. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.